You remember how psyched you were to wake up as a kid on Saturday mornings to watch cartoons? You'd spring out of your bed, grab a bowl of Frosted Flakes, and plop down in front of the TV. Maybe you watch Scooby-Doo or Charlie Brown, or perhaps you're an X-Man fan. Me, I loved Batman. Bruce Wayne was so smooth, and when he became Batman, man, he was fearless. I loved these two heroes so much as a kid, I convinced myself I could become them. I thought, perhaps, if I embraced this new identity, maybe I could achieve some really cool things. And it's only later in life that I realized that this would be a pattern that's followed me. That at distinct moments, I consciously tried to become someone else. But this change wasn't going to be easy for an awkward teenager. Like, instead of a Batmobile and a suit, I had a bike and a curfew. <laughs> so I'd watch the show nonstop so I could perfect their every single move. Bruce Wayne always wore suits, so on Halloween, I'd sneak into my brother's closet and grab his dress clothes and a suitcase, because what kid owns a briefcase, and then head to school. When confronted by a bully or faced with peer pressure, I channeled Batman's courage and attitude, and as a result, I was never pushed around. Bruce and Batman helped me to survive my teenage years. Through them, I believed that I could overcome anything. But when I was 16, nothing could prepare me for the greatest challenge of my life. One night, my friend called me. He said, Barry, yo, you got to get over here. Your sister's place caught on fire. I sped over as fast as I could. I arrived to a sea of lights from the ambulances, fire trucks, and police cars. Walking up, my friend pulled me over, and he said something that changed my life forever. He said, your sister made it out, but her kids did not. That day, February 11th, 2001, I lost my one-year-old niece and my two-year-old nephew to an electrical fire. I was terrified and in shock. Overwhelmed, I went on autopilot and let Batman take the wheel. Suddenly, I was renewed and ready to face this tragedy. As the first to arrive on scene, I had to speak with the doctors and police then I had to call each one of my family members to explain what had happened. I listened to them break down on the phone and again in person. Looking back almost 20 years later, I still can't believe that I survived that night. Channeling a new persona helped me to face the unimaginable. Now, Bruce and Batman would be the first of many personas that I would call upon throughout my life. And it turns out, People have been using personas long before I watched Batman. Carl Jung said that our personas are kind of a mask designed on one hand to make a definite impression upon others and also to conceal the true nature of the individual. Personas are all around us. Let's look at musicians. Does anyone here know Sasha Fierce? Well, how about Beyonce? Sasha Fierce is Beyonce's superhero, her alter ego. Whenever Beyonce needs to summon the courage to perform in front of thousands, boom, enter Sasha. Lady Gaga said that adopting the name Gaga was the most liberating thing that she had ever done, and it freed her to become the superstar that she knew she truly was. Actors use personas too. I mean, imagine what Marilyn Monroe did for Norma Jean. <laughs> you see, everyone, when you embrace a new persona, it allows you to break out of your comfort zone and become a newer, better version of yourself. One weekend in college, a friend invited me to watch them compete in a bodybuilding competition. Standing there, watching those guys on stage, I was blown away. And I told my friends, by the end of the year, 
I will compete in a bodybuilding competition. <laughs> and boy, did they laugh. I mean, honestly, they had a good point. I weighed 160 pounds and had zero training and knew nothing of the sport. But I did know a little about creating personas. So I created a new one. B, the bodybuilder. <laughs> I'll tell you about B. B went everywhere on campus lugging a gallon of water and Tupperware full of brown rice, chicken, and broccoli because bodybuilders stay hydrated and never missed a single meal. <laughs> when my classmates went out to party, B spent hours lifting weights. And the results? That's not Photoshop, folks. <laughs> That's me on stage at a bodybuilding competition. And guess what? It was that same year, just as I had promised my friends. Now, sure, I won my share of bodybuilding competitions, but I also made a lot of mistakes. I couldn't focus from chugging so much water. I hugged people like I was the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> and I got food poisoning multiple times from eating unrefrigerated chicken. <laughs> yeah, today, I'm a vegan. After college, I moved to Seattle, a city built on tech, and I wanted to become a part of it. So I decided to join the startup scene. One small problem, though. I knew nothing about startups. Coffee was the only job I had. What's Python or an MVP? So I created a new persona, Barry, the startup guy. <laughs> he was Steve Jobs plus Jay-Z. He wore suits everywhere and was always working. <laughs> he hung out with entrepreneurs, engineers, and designers and dove headfirst in the learning code. And eventually, he did what every entrepreneur does. He built an online platform, and he called it Inkstain. It was the multimedia solution to the boring resume. Now, as very the startup guy, I acquired some new skills and made some amazing connections, but I was overworked, sleep deprived, and I had poured thousands of dollars into my business. And worst of all, I had lost my playful spirit. Whenever a persona is not working for you, it's best to abandon it. Carl Jung warned of this, saying that you could literally lose yourself within yourself if it goes too far. I had to start fresh. I had to find my inner child. Speaking of, do you remember how good it felt as a kid to make things? That right there, that's our beautiful daughter. I yearned for this feeling, so I created another persona, Barry Johnson, the artist. I read a book about how most creatives start work at 3 in the morning, so that's what I do. I'd you know, I'm tired, but we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'd wake up in the dead of night, stumble to my kitchen table, and watch YouTube to learn how to draw. And it was brutal. I mean, I'd pound my fist on the table because nothing I ever drew looked like the pictures. <laughs> what was I thinking? How was I going to be able to do this? This new role was going to require an army of personas. So instead of selecting one artistic medium, I decided to conquer them all. You know, spread the risk around. <laughs> the painter loves chaos and gets paint on everything. The sculptor adores precision, and the filmmaker loves the art of storytelling. One day. I was on the bus, sketching, as I always do, whenever a woman nudged me. She said, that's good. 
This small gesture felt incredible. It was the first time someone had responded to my work. Now, after years of hard work, I finally made a name for myself. I've been able to show my art around the world, I wrote and illustrated a children's book, and I've collaborated with numerous creatives. That right there is me in front of my first mural. And don't let my face fool you. <laughs> I had just put the paintbrush down seconds before taking this photo. I don't know, guys. Honestly, I was just trying to look cool. <laughs> so what do I take away from this grand experiment? If I've learned anything, it's that whenever we define ourselves by one identity, we truly limit our potential. My personas have given me the strength to get up after I fall, to start over, and to reinvent myself. And you can do this too. Want your dream job? Make up someone that has it, then become them. Can't speak in front of people? Make up someone that can. I'm gonna tell you a secret, I'm gonna come a little closer. <laughs> I created a TEDx persona to do this speech today. <laughs> And we'll call him TEDx Barry. Oh, and this is his debut, so please go easy on him. <laughs> you know, everyone, truth is, we all confront a point in life where we think, I'm just not good enough. Next time this happens to you, ask yourself, where's your superhero? And don't take this advice solely from me. Take it from Batman, B, Barry, and Barry Johnson. That's a superhero, a bodybuilder, an entrepreneur, and an artist all rolled up in one. And we're all rooting for you. Thank you.